you too what it do man it is ya boy abdul up next and i'm back with another video yes sirski man and today we watching a toy story type video y'all let me know how y'all doing today in the comment section if you have an excellent day let me know like this video but this video is called her imaginary friend comes to life but he kills everyone that bullies her so pretty much Somebody might just have to catch it off of a joke. Some people consider themselves getting bullied when in reality they're just joking with you just like how they joke with the next person. Y'all gotta make sure y'all not sensitive. But hey, this kind of a W imaginary friend, he's killing the ops. He's getting a few people gone. You gotta watch this video because you don't do sh This dude does nothing for me. But he they said he was so scary. So Chucky need to take some notes because my ex still roaming around here free. Hunter and you know Miles still roaming around here free, bro. Let's see how this video goes. Three, two, one. The episode opens with Tom and Jill, a newlywed couple, celebrating okay. their new life. Yo, we did not need to see all of this, but hey, I'm cool with that. Tom's childhood home, a gift from Tom's mother over a couple of drinks and sushi. They are laughing and enjoying themselves when they hear a knock from the basement. Already an L when they said sushi, man. Only real ones know. Sushi be good, but it depends where you get sushi from. But don't get sushi from Sam's Club. I'll be the dude to tell you not to do that. Make sure when you get your sushi, you get it straight from the people who make sushi. You know what I'm saying? When you want your when you want your burrito, you go to you go to Juan. When you want your sushi, you go to Hong Kong. And when you want your rice. You go to a black ass African like me, yes, Ersky! And they go to check what caused it. The basement is full of boxes containing Tom's childhood memories with Jill. Okay. As they have known each other since childhood. Suddenly, a little dog appears from behind the closet and dashes upstairs, surprising them. Tom and Jill chase the dog, baffled and clueless as to where it came from and whether to keep it. What? Later that evening, Tom invites his friend Jason and his girlfriend to their place for dinner. It's always something wrong. I know people don't like when I pause a lot, but dude, seriously, how do you find a dog in your house and then raise it? Where did you come from? Bro, your house has some hidden doors. If, a, if I have a stray dog in my house, bro, he getting treated like a lab rat. What are you doing in my crib? It's a little different when I find you outside and then the little dude's like, uh, oh, dad, can we keep him? I'm still not keeping him. You don't know where he came from. He got rabies in his butthole. You ain't checked yet. That's how I move. So what y'all think about that? That's already suspicious. Can we start calling out when they do some dumb stuff? They always doing dumb stuff. Where they discuss memories from the past, and also Jill's old drawings of a character she named Pretzel Jack That's that actually they found fine. in the basement. Jill elaborates that she had visited a circus and seen a contortionist, and inspired by him, she made her own contortionist clown character That's that fine. she would draw in the stories she wrote. The next day, the couple goes to the store to get supplies when Jill notices Tom talking to a woman, Sarah. And when they return home, Jill confronts Tom about the woman and asks if he has had an intimate relationship with her. Tom, who introduces Sarah as a client, is baffled at the accusation and reminds her that he is not her father, who abandoned her after cheating on her mom. What the heck? That's what you say? Dang! Later, they reconcile after apologizing for what they said to each other. It is then that a mysterious door appears in the basement and the couple is freaked out by this inexplicable appearance. How? To settle their nerves, Tom calls a friend, Jason, who tries to open the door forcefully. What? But when nothing works, he brings out his shotgun and fires multiple shots, what? much to Tom and Jill's horror. He only stops when the power goes out, but it does the trick and the door opens. Inside, there is a stairway that leads to another door that has a handprint on it. So you just didn't call it a... You know? Oh, I can't open the door. It's a mysterious door after a random dog popped up into my house. Let me call my friend to shoot a shotgun through the door. Maybe that'll work. If I went this far into the show, I probably would have went along with it at this point. Because, okay, life's a, uh, life is officially a movie. It's time to do some dumb stuff. Just don't be the, just don't be the person that dies first. Jason is forbidden from using his gun again, and the three decide to ask their neighbor if they could see his basement, as they suspect that he might have created the passage to sneak into their house, what? but can't find anything suspicious in the neighbor's basement, and what? after apologizing, they leave. Neighbor the asks to come days, see they my try basement? everything to open the door and even call help, but nothing can open that door. 
One day, alone in the house, Jill goes to the basement what? after hearing some noise. She reaches the second door and, Chill. on a whim, places her hand on the hand imprint, which, surprisingly, opens the door. Chill. She looks around and sees a terrifying clown that whips around and bends unnaturally <laughs> before running past her. This little nigga run at me, he's catching all of my hands, bro. Bro, what y'all do if he run at you like this? He's catching every single hand, bro. Hey, what are you talking about? I would have punched him in the nuts, bro. Bro, you got to play unfair. Hit him in the nuts, bite him, and pinch him. Oh, yeah, and hit him in the face. Unnaturally, before running past her, Jill immediately calls the police and tells them that the intruder was already inside the house, but at that moment, they can't do anything more than keep an eye on the house for the night. What? Jill has been in therapy to deal with her distrust of men because of the trauma she underwent in her childhood. And now, Tom's meeting with a mystery woman makes Jill more suspicious of him. So she decides to place her trust on another man, Jason, what? who she asks for help and figure out what is going on in Tom's life and visits him. But their conversation soon changes into an argument when Jason blames Jill for letting her past shadow cast on her current relationship. Jill defends her. what I'm saying. Sometimes you have to tell the girl you're wrong. Girls be trying to vent to me and I be listening to their stories like, damn. Oh my God, you're the problem. You have to tell her. You have to tell her. Girls always trying to vent and rage whole time. It's you that's the problem. Saying that from experience. I've been beefing with my girl for like the last two weeks. But Jason doesn't stop there and gaslights Jill till the scary clown comes from the shadows and starts stabbing Jason till Jill screams for him to stop. What? The murder soon comes to light and the investigating officers question a shell-shocked Jill at her home as she is prime suspect in Jason's murder. But something the officer said strikes Jill. And that night, she goes to the basement to look at the drawing pad that has many drawings of Pretzel Jack. She can't unsee the uncanny resemblance between the character she created and the clown that fatally attacked Jason. Since then, she has been having flashbacks from her childhood about a mysterious door that was in the house she lived in, or not, she can't remember. So to Man, I'd be mad to be dating this bitch! She got all these different demons she's bringing back to life. You dating the Erica Badu ass, bitch? She bringing demons back to life? These are the girls you stay away from. Triple numbers in their bio. Stay away from. Every day they post about the Zodiac sign. Stay away from. They like plants. It might just be good, but it's not worth it long distance. They gonna haunt you. They cast spells and shit. Now. How do you cast spells and shit so I can do some damage in my own life? For the rest of these recurring thoughts, she visits her childhood house and the new owner graciously welcomes her. While inside the house, Jill manages to sneak into her room, but she can't find the door she saw in her flashbacks. So to cross check if she missed it somehow, she sneaks inside the house once the owner has gone out to walk her cat. What? Jill walks into her old room and tears down the wallpaper that covers where she saw the door. What? And as she suspected, there is a door that is smaller than the one in her current house. What? She opens the door to find something peculiar inside that resembles a human figure, but is too distorted to make out clearly. Jill is now convinced that Pretzel Jack has somehow come to life. Jill, you got too much going on. I would have been walked out the door. I need my divorce, bitch. You was not about to ruin my life. This is not Nightmare on... This ain't no horror movie. You are crazy. You need to go get a therapist. And you need to get out of my life. What are you talking about? And when Are y'all sticking with, with, with a witch? She's a witch. But at least she got the ops to slop... She got somebody to slide on all her ups. I'm telling you, if she gives me her method, I'm using it. You're not safe. He's a glimpse of him in her bedroom. She screams for help. But when Tom checks and finds no one, he questions her sanity. Similarly, her therapist doesn't show any interest in what she's saying and, much to her chagrin, recommends her medicines, making her leave the session midway. <laughs> When nobody believes her, Jill turns to yet another man, her neighbor, Ian, who listens to her without judgment. Jill feels she can freely talk to him, so she confides in Ian about Pretzel Jack and how she believes she created the entity that killed Jason. 
Ian seems to understand her and presents his notion of the contortionist, describing- Now she's talking to the neighbor for hours? If I'm your husband, I hate you. Cause he wants to hit! <laughs> That's why! As her protector and correlates his action to Jill getting angry at the people. He also confides in Jill and tells her that when he was a kid, he also drew himself a friend, a very tall character aptly named the Tall Boy. On the other hand, Tom has secrets of his own as he secretively gives Sarah's baby a toy at the park. What? And there's this mysterious woman with whom he occasionally meets and talks about Sarah and how much the baby looks like him, indicating that he might have fathered a child with her. These meetings are strange and unconventional therapy sessions take place in which the woman provides Tom with a sensory deprivation pool to- How do you- How do you not know if the kid is- You was raising somebody's kid that's not yours? <laughs> Done seen the 50 red flags by now! Take his mind off the recent events and all other things happening in his life. Look at his but little it is eye. weird that she has cameras installed in therapy rooms through which she keeps an eye on Tom what? without his knowledge. What is she about Meanwhile, to do? Jill has just reached home after she met with Ian when Tom gets a call on his laptop. Jill decides to take it since he's not home and is shocked to hear a child crying from the background and Sarah warning Tom not to come anywhere near her family again or she will call the cops on him. A furious Jill cannot believe her suspicions are coming true. All this while when she was made to feel she is in the wrong. Back at the anonymous woman's maze-like house, Pretzel Jack appears after Jill fails to control her anger and badly injures the woman, who tries to shoot him but to no avail. He then makes his way to Tom, attacking him with a knife and trying to drown him. What the Tom fuck? Tom fights back but gets stabbed in his chest while tackling the contortionist. Nigga just got popped in the pool! What is going on?! The badly injured woman has some strength left, and she fires at Pretzel Jack, allowing Tom to run. But the shot doesn't do much damage, and Pretzel Jack twists his b- I be damned! I be damned! I be damned! He should not be bulletproof! What are you gonna be able to do, hit him in his nuts? I don't know! His head! Get him in the head! Man! Slap him in the head with your dick, I don't know! Body ...to appear like a spider, puts himself back on his feet, and follows Tom. In the meantime, Tom gets himself in the woman's car, but he doesn't know- This nigga Tom is getting chased in his, uh, in his boxers, bro. I be so mad. I'm just trying to get some extra cheeks on the side, and my girl got a clown chasing me in my boxers. I'll never cheat again, baby. Please, please forgive me. I'm over here getting chased in my boxers by a clown? How to drive a stick. Because of this, he accidentally puts the car in reverse and gets ran by a van once he reaches the main road. Pretzel Jack sees the accident and decides to leave for now. Jill soon receives a call from the hospital about Tom and gets ready to leave when she hears some noise from downstairs and finds the front door open. She gets scared when all of a sudden, Ian walks in with a dog, explaining the dog had run out. She is relieved and asks him to stay with her till she heads to the hospital, and Ian offers to drive her. At the hospital, Tom is not happy to see Ian with Jill, and sensing the awkwardness, Jill asks Ian to leave. The couple- Why the hell? What is going on? You pull up with the neighbor while your man just got popped by your demon? You're evil! She's the problem, y'all! Who's the problem? Is then visited by the police, who show them the footage they recovered of the clown attacking Tom in the pool. They have also identified the mysterious woman, who turns out to be a doula, and they are curious to know how Tom knew her, since she never advertised her therapy sessions anywhere. Abdul? When the police question him about Sarah, Tom doesn't disclose much. However, Tom is reminded of Jill's drawings of the clown contortionist and believes that a psychopath must have seen the drawings and made a mask to look like the character. He soon gets discharged from the hospital and when they reach home, Tom asks Jill if she knows this person who is trying to harm them. Jill calmly states that he's me and takes Tom to the door to show him the carcass of Pretzel Jack she picked up when she last visited her old house. It resembles a hollow scalded mannequin, and after Jill moved out from her old house, Pretzel Jack too ceased to exist. She further explains that he has come back to protect her from getting hurt. 
It is difficult for Tom to wrap his head around Jill's story and questions her why Pretzel Jack tried to hurt him. Jill tells him she heard the baby when she answered Sarah's call and asks him to tell the truth. Tom finally confesses that he was involved with an already married Sarah, but he ended it after he got together with Jill. Though he came to know later that Sarah was pregnant and was sure the kid was his, but Sarah didn't want her husband to know, so she threatened Tom to st Damn! That's who he had the baby with! This nigga! Oh my god! Watch where you put your dick! Stay away. Jill is beyond furious at such a You betrayal, lost your wife and, and you got killed. Pretzel Jack, who is sleeping under somebody's patio, and he soon puts his limbs in place before stomping to Jill's house. By the time Pretzel Jack walked like a little goof ass nigga, he's not that guy. Pretzel Jack, you walk like you you walk like you got a turd up your ass, nigga. Stop walking like you get shit done, that creepy ass walk. You look like you sit at playgrounds and look at little kids. Stop acting like you tough, nigga. Stop acting like you tough, nigga. Because if you came through that door behind me, I would do you in like you a pussy. He reaches the house. He sees Jill and Tom leave in their car. The couple has decided to visit Jill's psychiatrist for a couple session to save their marriage, but it backfires because both men dismiss Jill and her story about her imaginary friend, enraging Jill. She tells them that Pretzel Jack is coming as the light flickers, but the doctor is confident nothing will happen until Pretzel Jack crawls inside through the window, through the window! and kills the doctor in front of Jill and Tom. The couple dash out of the building and hop into Ian's truck, who is surprisingly waiting for them at the entrance. Pretzel Jack chases them for quite some time before they lose him, and Tom looks at Jill in utter disbelief. They all go to Ian's home, and she asks for a method to destroy him, to which Ian paints a gruesome picture of destroying every part of Pretzel Jack to get rid of him, but also shares a different approach, which is to live with it and control it. Now that they know Pretzel Jack is real and Jill's creation, Ian suggests they lure him out to trap him and then learn to control him. But for that... That's too much shit. I'm just gonna go move on with my life. Yeah, you're trying to ruin my life. I just got stabbed by a demon. Now your demon chasing me down on feet? Running like he in the marching band? Oh no! She will have to go through emotional turmoil. They sit in the empty room behind the dream door, and as Jill's feelings and emotions get skinned, Pretzel Jack's pace increases as he makes his way to their house. Bro, this nigga is ugly as fuck! Tom walks outside the room, but stops when he sees Pretzel Jack at the edge of the stairs. Just then, Jill's phone rings, and she picks it up to find it is her dad. Pretzel Jack suddenly charges towards Tom, but runs past him into the room where he sees Jill who is now calm and performs some moves to impress her. Jill smiles as she looks at Pretzel Jack and he takes her in an embrace, making her feel safe and happy. No, this moment, nigga did not Sarah's just take your bitch. Can... Me personally, I wouldn't let my girl be doing that with no... It could have been a dog, it could have been her dad, it could have been a clown. You gonna let him do that? And you ain't gonna do nothing about it. You are... Come on, you could do way better than that, bro. You getting stepped on, bro. Where's your nuts at? Oh my god, this guy has this guy's balls hasn't dropped yet. He's getting pushed around by a clown. Where is the instigator in this story? That's where I would have been. I would have been on his side like, wow, that's your girl or is that his? Brace, making her feel safe and happy. At that moment, Sarah's voice can be heard from upstairs calling out to Tom. Tom quickly makes his way up and opens the door for her. Jill and Ian also head upstairs, but when Jill sees Sarah outside with Tom arguing, she loses her cool, enticing Pretzel Jack to go after Tom and Sarah. <laughs> Sarah gets stabbed in her leg before Tom flees with her, and Jill and Ian tail them. While trying to save themselves, Sarah and Tom also try to sort things out, and Tom finds out that the child is not his after Sarah got the DNA tests done. So to tell him that, she came to his house that evening. They enter a gymnasium, and Tom hides an injured Sarah in a room while he tries to lure away Pretzel Jack. Soon, a chase ensues, and they end up in the swimming yeah, pool over area for you, bro. where Pretzel Jack tries to drown. Oh my Ian. goodness! Ian and Jill also reach there, and Jill panics, seeing her husband in danger because of her imaginary friend. However, Ian tries you to just calm her down. Beat up, to bro. Fight on, back, so he can guide her to control Pretzel Jack. Once she gets control of Pretzel Jack, 
She frees Tom first, and then Ian helps her crush her creation using her mind. And that ends up with Pretzel Jack exploding into white dust underwater. Simultaneously, Jill and Ian fall to the floor, and Jill's ear bleeds. What? They take Sarah to the hospital, where the situation gets awkward as no one talks to the other. So Sarah asks to have a moment alone with Jill and tells her that Tom doesn't have an illegitimate child with her, putting an end to Jill's suspicions. Yet she doesn't feel at ease because Tom lied. Outside the room, Tom and Ian stand waiting, but Tom doesn't trust Ian and wanders off to avoid being in his company, but ends up meeting the detectives. Meanwhile, Jill asks Ian to give her a ride, but tells him she doesn't want to go home and wishes to learn to control her mind. Ian takes her to his family's summer home, and a feeling of deja vu suddenly engulfs Jill as she enters the house. Ian prepares the bed for her, and once she's asleep, he goes through her phone. Doesn't everybody need a pepper jack in their life? What's that nigga name? Cracker Barrel, the dude, the clown? I need a Cracker Barrel in my life too. Ugh, ugh, few of you niggas gonna die! Ugh! Where her dad has left dozens of messages and calls asking her to meet him. After being grilled by the detectives at the hospital, Tom returns home, tired. He calls for Jill, but when no one answers, he reaches out for his phone and finds a message from Jill's dad, Bill, who sounds panicked and asks Tom to tell Jill to meet him as soon as possible. Nigga name is Bill. Oh my god, get a load of this dork, y'all. As he has something very important to share about his family. The scene then shifts to a motel, where Bill is drinking. When he hears a knock at his door, he rushes to find it is Ian, who addresses him as dad, what? indicating Jill is his half-sister. Ian despises his dad and conjures Tallboy, who gouges Bill's eyes, what? killing him instantly. Who is that? Moments later, Tom reaches the address Bill had mentioned in his voicemail and sees Ian leaving the same motel. Tom goes into the motel looking for Bill, but the room Bill had mentioned is empty, as if he was never there. The next day, Ian starts training Jill and reveals he created her dog, which astonishes her. After finding her phone smashed, she can't shake an inexplicable feeling and steps out of the house for some fresh air. Unbeknownst to her, Tallboy is keeping a vigil on her. Once back inside, she hears rustling from within a closet. She opens it to find a stuffed dog toy that looks exactly like she had when she was a little girl. Fear grips her immediately as she realizes something is very wrong, but she composes herself before Ian and says she needs to go home. Back at the house, what Tom is that? his dog's twin that takes him into Ian's home, and after finding no one's home, Tom snoops in to find Jill's pictures and proof that reveals Ian is Jill's half-brother. Ian and Jill Lord. return home and find Tom inside the house with all the pictures, and he confronts Ian about it. Jill suddenly remembers why the house looked familiar, because it was the same house where her dad had taken her and her mother a few times, and she had left her stuffed dog there. She puts the pieces together and is furious that he lied to her, but Ian wants her to understand he did everything for her and takes them to show Bill's corpse in his garage. What? But it is half chewed by hungry dogs that are- Nigga, you killed her dad? What is going on? You ugly, ugly god? What is going on? Ian's creation. Horrified by what she has just witnessed, Jill steps back and yells at Ian to stay away from her and calls the cops. The cops and the detectives soon arrive and Ian confesses to killing his dad and also takes the blame for Jason's killing. What? A lot of mental illness going on. He further states that he needed the condo he lives in to be near Jill, so he put the house owners to rest. He is arrested and taken away by two detectives, and as he is being transported, they get stuck behind a school bus and wait for it to move. Just as they are waiting, Tallboy comes from behind, holding drilling machines, and brutally kills the detectives. Jill and Tom reconcile after the time apart and realize how much they love each other. Tom steps out of the house to see Ian standing on his porch, covered in blood. Tom calls a cop who is at the neighboring crime scene, but to his horror, Ian makes Tallboy slay the cop. What Tom is going on? Inside, but Ian has already conjured a door behind Tom, through which a red hooded entity stares back at Tom. 
Jill calls out to Tom, but he doesn't answer, so she goes out and finds the body of the cop and a message for her, asking her to meet at the ghost neighborhood written by his blood. In the ghost neighborhood, Tom is seen being dragged by- But Tom don't deserve none of this! What did Tom deserve? Okay, he hit some cheeks. Bro, this nigga been getting his ass beat from the beginning to the end of this! The tall boy into a building under construction, and he stops near- Free Ian, Tom! Who has just finished eating to keep up his strength. He confesses that he loves Jill in a pure, uncomplicated way, and sees them being connected by the abilities they possess, much to Tom's disgust. Your sister! Y'all can't beat the allegations! But Tom doesn't stay longer to hear his nonsense and makes a run for it as soon as he gets a chance and finds him being pursued by the tall boy. Meanwhile, Jill arrives at the ghost neighborhood in search of Ian. Unbeknownst to her, the hooded entities are following her and when the security guard tries to stop her, those entities attack the security guard, stabbing him to death. Jill gets appalled and runs to hide from them and tall boy revving his drill nearby. She soon finds Tom, but after he forces himself onto her, she realizes it is not Tom, but Ian's creation with a psyche so he can feel Jill. What? Upon realizing this, she Your own brother dumb creepy! He flees, and Tom's doppelganger chases her till she impales him with a piece of fence. Just as the fake Tom breathes his last, the real Tom comes, and to prove that he is real, he cuts himself with a nail, showing Jill his crimson blood. Jill finally breathes a sigh of relief and hugs Tom. It is the following day, and they step out in the open and soon get chased by Tallboy. They hide in a house where Jill concentrates on conjuring Pretzel Jack while Tom distracts Tallboy. Just as Tallboy is about to attack her, Pretzel Jack appears, and an epic showdown between the imaginary friends of the part siblings begins. In no time- Yo, this is a whole bunch of mental illness. This dude is on- Y'all, you killed your dad to be with your sister? And now y'all imaginary friends are having an imaginary face-off? Yeah, yeah, take your meds next time they tell you to take them, little goof ass nigga. The fuck is you talking about? Pretzel Jack snatches Tallboy's drill and cuts his head in half, eliminating him. To put an end to their Pretzel routine, Jack dumb Jill ugly. suggests they finish Ian. Ian knows what's coming next, so he runs and uses the last bits of his energy to revive Tallboy. He continues running, and the trio tails him into another abandoned home. Jill finds Ian in a room with dozens of different colored rooms. Ian is not ready to give up on Jill and starts tackling her, which is witness. Isn't just no the right answer? That's what I don't get about you creepy niggas. If they told you no one time, bro, there will be a girl that tell you yes, bro. You don't have to go at your sister. I don't get that. ...by Pretzel Jack, but before he can rescue Jill, he is attacked by the now-revived tall boy who... He's nodding! Not! ...who splits Pretzel Jack's body in half. Soon after, Tom reaches there, and the couple stabs Ian in his heart. Tallboy runs towards them to stop them from hurting his creator, but he accidentally pierces Ian's body with his drill as Jill and Tom jump out of the way. Ian suffers a lot before he dies, making Tallboy and all the doors vanish. Sometime later, we see Jill and Tom are parents to a beautiful baby who has inherited Jill's ability and can conjure entities. Who can become killers anytime. Now this is a crazy story. This is Tom's fault. Tom, when you see the red flag, you take the red flag and you go, my man. You don't just sit there and love her. Nigga, she gonna kill you. You just had a baby with her. Now your child gonna do the same thing to you. Hey, that was a W story though, man. Like this video if you think this was a W story. Who tweaked out the most, man? Free Tom. Help Tom. Tom needs some help. He been getting his ass beat up and down for this shorty. I would have been dipped. Look, man, shout out these four people right here. If you want to shout out, all you got to do is just like this video and let me know you liked it in the comment section. It is your boy, Dooley. I'll see y'all in the next one. Yes, Hershky.